NBA league is running a training center amidst the Uyghur genocide in Xinjiang, China, aka East Turkestan. In October 2016, the NBA, which is the American National Basketball Association, set up one of its three Chinese training centers in Uruki. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce that. They, they, set, up a training, they set up a training center in the capital of Xinjiang. Right. Um, the center, which houses roughly 240 student athletes aged 14 to 18, has kept a very low profile. That's unsurprising because the, Xing, the NBA presence in Xinjiang is shameful. It's not hard to figure out the motives of the NBA. China has a market of 1.4 billion potential fans. Beijing presumably approves of the league's presence in Xinjiang, both because it helps bring development to a relatively poor region, and more importantly, it helps legitimize the repression of Uyghur Muslims. There are also reports of ongoing physical abuse of the student athletes in the NBA training camps in the Xinjiang region. So I wanted to bring this up because the NBA's relationship with China is the definition of hypocrisy. I wish that I watched basketball just so that I could boycott the NBA because of how pissed off I am at the league and Adam Silver. Um, so, will you, you guys, you guys give your take and yeah. Well, AKL saying I had no idea NBA had training centers in China. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Walker saying I love Chinese people. I love the Chinese people. My wife is from there, but damn, their government sucks. Yes, it does. But I don't know if I could say, do you think that's like a, I don't know, I don't want to like be too critical, but I don't like it when people say I love and then they, they and then they mention a group of people that is like over a billion, like millions of millions of people. Like, I don't know. I think that's like an over... I, just I, I know that you personally find that as insulting as saying that all group of people are X, like a bad like thing, right? Any group of people, like, oh, women are great. Like, really? Okay, yeah, but enough of life? your personal beef. Let's get to the news. Okay, so, okay, what do you yeah. guys think of this story? I mean, we think, I think, I, I mean, I want to hold the NBA accountable, but how, how effectively, like, it, is it working? Like, are they feeling the pressure or are they like, <laughs> like you guys, like, you know, this money, like you guys, like, oh, well, sorry, you, you guys are so ridiculous. If you think you have much influence over these giant deals that we're making, like, are we, is, is there any, you yeah, go on. It is, um, their true face is being revealed. I'll say that. And it's become increasingly evident over the past year, the extent to which they do not give a, F about human rights in exchange for the amount, the, the, the power of the Chinese economy and their dollar. Right. And it, um, it's just, it's continuing to be exposed over and over again. So ESPN did a bombshell investigation into the physical abuse of the student athletes in these Chinese centers, particularly in Xinjiang. And the environment within that training center in Xinjiang, um, a former league employee compared it with the atmosphere, compared the atmosphere when he worked in Xinjiang to World War II Germany. NBA employees were explicitly told not to talk to ESPN reporters about this story. They're trying to cover their tracks and the truth is getting out. And particularly because the NBA over the past couple of months has decided to create this public persona of being a one of the most more social justice oriented American athletic leagues. Um, they have to be held accountable across the board. Right. And it is so apparent how they are selling out for China, particularly in regards to the free Hong Kong movement, as well as the hypocrisy of how, they are treating and are being complicit in the treatment of the Uyghur Muslims. Rivka, you had something to say? You're muted. 
I think it's, so we've got what's going on in China with this training camp. And then there's been this controversy for a while now about support for China. Like, for example, LeBron James sort of um, uh, talking back to that guy, one of the basketball players who had supported the people in Hong Kong and other players supporting um, people in Hong Kong or speaking out for democracy or against China uh, and feeling like they're being shot down or told to be quiet. And all, so there's this, this thing has been going, I don't know a whole lot about sports, but I do know that this NBA China relationship was on the stage for a while now with LeBron James telling this guy that his support for Hong Kong wasn't educated. And then the Turkish basketball player getting upset and saying like, you guys don't know what this, you know, freedom's not free. These people are, you know, autocrats. And there's been this back and forth for a while between players and the NBA not wanting them to say anything, particularly about China, against I China. I love that Turkish basketball player. He's awesome. He recently wrote a really good piece for The Spectator. Yeah, so and it's Cantor. Yeah, yeah, and the reason I'm I know so much about this is from Melissa Chen, who also works for The Spectator, who does love sports. And so right. thank you, Melissa, because I wouldn't know anything about it. But I do know LeBron James because he's All right, so athlete. let me just read, let me read some um, comments. Justin is saying, LOL, NBA goes woke with Jersey messages, BLM kneeling for, kneeling, BLM kneeling for anthem, but China is okay. Uh, Ethan is saying, I just watched a video about this. Uh, and put on the discussion discourse page. Okay, the NBA. Um, I think you mean Discord, the Discord page. Okay, the, yeah, guys, check us out on our Discord server. Link in the description. The NBA, many uh, many other businesses and Democrats back uh, and Democrat backed our Democrats back are pro China. I think that's what it means. Um, she, there was another comment here. I saw where is it? Where is ah. It's jumping around. Here is it. Ethan is saying the NBA brings almost $2 billion per year from one of the Chinese streaming services alone. They are all about the Benjamins. The airline industry is uh, on it as well. Yep. Okay. Um, I wow, have quite... one more comment. Suleiman is saying Yeager should... Uh, Suleiman is saying Yeager should physically re revolt against the Chinese oppression. I don't know, man. I think the China government kind of wants that a little bit uh, so that they could just that, that would justify to, this because the whole reason why it's happening is because this is under the guise of counterterrorism measures. Right. They're like, their response I think to the counterterrorism Chinese... measures is to collectively punish an entire ethnic group. I think I, I I suspect a little bit. I'm not sure about this, but I think the Chinese government is like, why are you guys not doing a little bit more terrorism so we could show the whole world? Like, come on. Come on, poke, poke, do te do your thing, do your terrorism. You guys, aren't you guys Muslim? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I think like they kind of want a little bit of a backlash to like show, the, tell the world, like, see, look at this, look at this. this Isn't is someone gonna blow themselves up over this already? <laughs> oh my god, this is like okay, guys. We're obviously okay, Susanna. Oh. You're terrible. Um, so I think it's worth noting how poor of a position that the NBA leadership has regarding this very complicated and reprehensible situation. So recently in, let me double check the date on this, around the beginning of July, Adam Silver was pushed, he's the NBA commissioner, he was pushed on his um, relationship with China. And um, he said, quote, as I've said before, we come to China with a certain set of core American values and principles. They have a different view on how things should be done, how and yeah, and how things have been done, how things should be done. And hopefully we can find a mutual respect for each other. There is no mutual respect deserved under ethnic genocide, okay, or the stripping away of democracy. 
that I, I have nothing but resentment for people who believe that that is an American value that we are pushing on people. Um, it's insane. This is once again, highlights the insidious nature of cultural relativism. And I'm hoping that more people hold the NBA's feet to the fire for their kowtowing to this authoritarian regime. So I have an article from October of 2019 when this whole LeBron, you know, don't talk bad about, you know, China thing blew up. And um, this was in uh, something called Bleacher Report. It's some sports mag thing. I don't know. It's Anyways, very well known. Okay. So that shows you how much I know. Okay. So anyways, at some point, this person who's written this article says that, you know, you can't expect them to do anything. You know, it's not, you know, you can't expect the NBA to do anything. It's not really their place and they're just a business like any other business. And now I've lost the quote and there's nothing that you can be expect can be expected of them. And just because they make public statements, oh, here it is, to expect NBA players and coaches in the midst of everything, you're talking about, you know, the money they're making, the China problem, all of it, to wade into an international firestorm and undermine their employer is probably asking too much, no matter how many times they've been lauded for their social consciousness. So they're basically saying like, oh, okay, so, we can't, we're not expecting this about this issue, but go ahead and have, you know, have a social conscience and we'll loud you, but we can't expect you to speak out against China because they're what too big to too big to speak out against, or, you know, they make too much money for the NBA or right. I, I don't know. Yeah. We should, we should move on to the next news though. We, I think we spent too much time on this, but yeah, good thing. Um, Right. Yeah, it just really frustrates me when this is a league that pre-approves social justice statements that people can have on their jerseys, right? What's the point of making a statement if it has to be pre-approved? And right. when people are trying to customize their own and the new little thing that they started where you can customize their own jersey, you were not allowed to order. You Physically, the software would time out if you were trying to order any merchandise that said free Hong Kong, anything regarding Hong Kong, what? anything regarding Uyghurs. Wow. This is how deep this goes. So, yeah, people need to call out the NBA, NBA left, right, and center. And like I said, I wish I actually watched them so I could cut off my support to give them the finger. Um, so if you do watch basketball, consider that. Um, and tell other people about the situation in Xinjiang, because honestly, a lot of people don't know. And the best way that we can help speak for this population is to educate other people and teach other people about the importance of calling on our government to sanction the F out of every single official involved in this situation. So, um, all right. News. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why, what has, what's holding you back. Okay, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also, if, you, if you're if you not getting notifications and stuff because YouTube is not telling people that we have shows because YouTube is like, oh, this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think is no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, nah, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well and share, share our videos because 
you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that. But we don't care about that anymore. <laughs> but we also get deprioritized. And that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. So